Yo, what's up? This is Rock Land, and I want to personally thank you for joining me for 100 episodes of this show called Passport Kings. I really appreciate it. But yo, today on Passport Kings, we're going to go over getting up out of the sunken place. Engage. I'm Rock Land. I travel the globe for leisure, exploration, and education about different cultures. Join me, and you too can be royalty. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. After watching an excellent horror movie by the guy from Key and Pill, Jordan, named Get Out, one part really stood out to me. It was a term used called the sunken place. Basically, when someone is hypnotized, they lose all control of their body and make room in their life for another entity to take over their physical body. In the movie, spoiler alert, the liberal white family and their associates were taking ownership of the body once the original black owner was left semi-unconscious. By the way, a very good movie. Y'all need to check it out. But don't worry, a crazed white person has not or will not be taking over me. But something far worse does. A combination of cheap thrills, procrastination, and outside advertising. What do I mean? The TV, the internet, mainly social media, video games, and even books are in a constant fight to take ownership of my time. Not to mention the fact that I want to do more travel videos and also take care of this full-time job. The latter examples, of course, deserve my time because I have to pay bills and feed my need to travel and be creative. If someone was to tell me I could no longer have food, shelter, or the ability to see my thoughts come to real life through creativity, I would lose my mind. I would be in a place much worse than any sunken place. I would go into survival mode, which can be very dangerous and cause long-term consequences. But that's not what today's topic is about. Today's video is about the next worst state to be in. I now call it the sunken place. The sunken place is a mental state that we can go into when we are putting our creativity and long-term goals on the back burner and in place we let short-term, quick-release pleasures suck up the time in our lives. Pause. When I'm in mine, I watch a lot of videos on the internet, I watch TV, I play video games on the PS4 and on my phone, and I argue with people online about social issues. When I first termed this sunken place for me, I decided that this was an awful state to be in. I am not getting my much needed writing done, I'm not editing, I'm not recording, I'm not even goal oriented in those hours except for the goals that video games are tasking me to reach. Controversially, even reading books can be pointless if they are just entertainment books where no skills are being learned. And even when skills are being learned, if you're too busy reading and not putting them into action, they're just as good as not knowing them. But after thinking about it for a while, I came to the conclusion that a sunken place can be much needed time if it is fulfilling some special needs. When I play my PS4, I link up with some of my good friends that I grew up with and through the PlayStation mic, we just chill and many times talk more than we actually play games. Before I had the PS4, which they convinced me to get, I only spoke back and forth with them on social media posts. We all have grown up and moved far away from each other. The feeling of connection that I get on those nights we link up online is much needed for my mental sanity. Books that I read for pleasure improves my vocabulary. TV shows and movies keep me up to date with current events and being entertained, which is also more important for your mental well-being than it gets credit for. In other words, those activities that I do when I turn off my entrepreneurial paper chase and drift into my sunken place actually serves a purpose. The trick, I think, is getting control of the time spent in this place. Obviously, one cannot spend all of their time having fun unless they were born rich or won the lottery. All activities that are necessary for survival has to flow along without interruption. Work hours should be only for work. When you're actually working during those work hours instead of shooting the breeze with chicks at the office, cracking jokes with the dudes, or just lollygagging, it actually creates more time for the rest of your day. Video games, movies, social media debates, and TV need to be cut to a bare minimum. One way I found I had an exorbitant amount of hours was just unclicking notifications on Facebook groups that I had commented on. Speaking of Facebook, don't let it send notifications to your phone or PC. They cleverly create those notifications to subconsciously tell you to drop everything you're doing to read it as if the phone just rang or one of your clients needs something. 
When you are finished with your task for the day, then by all means, go see what you missed. But as far as checking it more than three to five times a day, that has to stop. When it comes to video games, I know when my friends are on, and a lot of times I may drink alcohol on those nights, which can really ruin my motivation for getting things done the next morning. I guess the best strategy for that is to know exactly when they are all on and only play any games during that time. I'll give it maybe three hours per night or six hours per week, maybe like 10.30 to 1.30 Friday and Saturday night. Besides, dudes are old and we start falling asleep <laughs> one by one around that time anyway. As far as TV and movies go, I mean WWE he used to take up like five hours of my time on Monday and Tuesday if I let it. Power 105 interviews, Vlad TV and Battle Rap will destroy five to ten hours a week on YouTube and that also needs to stop. Well, my TV time will now only be on two shows I watch on Sunday night, Walking Dead and that new Star Trek. I gave up on football since the Kaepernick crap, so altogether I'll be spending about three hours a week on TV. And I'm an add-on working out for about an hour or two a day, and my unproductive sunken place should be under complete control. There are 168 hours in a week, 56 of those hours are spent sleeping, another 56 is spent working. That leaves a third of the week left to work on our creativity. I can only imagine the beautiful stuff I will mold and craft when I spend the same amount of hours working on it that I gave my 9 to 5 or to sleep. Today is not only my first video of 2018, but it's also my 100th Passport Kings video. Once again, I'm ready to shake things up, not only on this channel, but in my many new avenues I'm coming up with to reach my goals. I always say stick to your goals, and goals shouldn't change that much. But what should change is your avenues of getting to them. There is no set way in stone to reach what you want to reach, as long as you keep your goal in mind. And guess what? You guys are welcome to join me. I hope you join me on this mission to get our time back. Time is one of those things that no one can control, but you can control what you do with it. As a famous poet once said, well his name is Rakim, he said it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. So if you're in a place physically or mentally that you don't want to be in, make sure you get a bone out of there like a king, a passport king.